We're back. Who's Fraba? <laughs> no, it's Husa. Who's Wusa? As you rub your earlobes. What uh, movie is that from? Um, Anger Management. It is mm-hmm. okay. With I feel what's this pretty, face? oh so pretty. Billy Chris, is Billy Chris on that? No fucking. I know what's his face is. Um, everybody yell at the at their listening their earphones their car. Um, De Niro. Jack Nichols. Robert De Niro. Ro- no. no, it is Jack Nichols. Yes, yeah, Jack the, Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. He's the Jack Nicholas is the golfer. Jack Nicholson, Nicholson yeah. is uh-huh. a gem. Why are they Billy Crystal's in Anger Man? I don't know. Also, Definitely not Billy Crystal. I just took a huge bite of chorizo sausage. Hold on. <laughs> Googling anger management. Okay. Hold, please. Guys, we're trying to be better with our pop culture references. We just don't want people tweeting at us, Jamie. <laughs> Beth. Beth. <laughs> it's Adam Sandler. Yeah. He's okay. the guy who gets sent. He breaks up with his girlfriend and he's all like a nice guy. And then they're like secretly have rage issues. Also, and then if there's. Googling your management, it tells you like <laughs> um, tips on anger management. Also important. Is it? Mm hmm. Meh. From someone who has anger management issues. Charlie Sheen's in it? What? Oh, wait. This is a TV series? No, it's a movie. When was there a TV series? I have no idea. With Charlie Sheen. Hmm. And now he's down the rabbit hole, and he's not going to listen to anything I have to say. Nope. So I'm just going to be over here talking to myself. It's got Marissa Tomei in it, and Luis Guzman. Sure. You're like, it's got Woody Harrelson in it. Yeah. And Alan Covert. I was going to say, there's some really recognizable faces. Mm-hmm. Heather Graham, who's in like every 90s movie. January Jones. Do I recognize that name in her that face? A, but is that a porn star? N- not every alliteration is a porn star. Stereo. Her name is January. Okay. I'm just saying there's memes now that like tell you your porn names based on like when you're no. born and shit. That feels like one of those names. It's not. Um. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. And Harry Dean Stanton, who played the blind man. I should really watch this movie, apparently. Have you ever seen it? No. You've never seen it? John C. Riley's in it? It's a yes, he is and an underrated, amazing actor, and everybody needs to watch like Gangs of New York and you need to watch Chicago and like he's amazing. And, and Jonathan Lofren, who I only know because he was in The Water Boy as the cross eyed guy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh. You're Rudy really? Giuliani's in it as himself? What? Why have I never seen Anger it's Management? It's been so long since I've seen this and movie. And Kevin Nealon and John McEnroe? Okay. So that explains why when I'm explaining... I can't believe you didn't know that it was an Adam Sandler There's movie. no way this is the cast. Yes, it is. in it as a masseur? Yes, it is. The movie's insane. Bobby Knight? So now we know what we're doing when we're done recording the podcast. Okay. So we're going to go watch it's Anger been Management. been 10 minutes in this episode and all I've done is just realize that I've never seen Anger Management. And that's a travesty. That I can't... That's why I started explaining the plot Netflix? to you, and that's why you had no idea. Where I'm like, yeah, he broke up with his girlfriend, and he goes, and he's supposed to be like this really nice guy, and then they're like, no, you actually have anger issues, and then they kind of like. I like Adam at- Sandler too. I know, and Jack Nicholson. It's because you have his head shape and Whoa. hair. <laughs> if I shave my face, I look a little like him. I almost want uh-huh. you to do it so that we can take a picture and show everybody how much you look like Adam Sandler. Murph's got to bring those sides in a little tighter. Hard pass. Not even for your birthday. No. You're supposed to shave your face once a year. I know, and I didn't because you said I have a look now. Uh, yeah, but we're not that big yet. But then again, the look, my beard in the picture, your hair is so different than... You don't have a mohawk anymore? I know. Anyway. We're going to do a rebranding, guys. Can you start this with your... No. Okay. Okay. No, I'm going to start right now. You ready? With your name. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, I'm Scott. And you're listening to Tell Me Something Terrible. You are. Thank you. This is our quarter life crisis of an episode. It is. 25. Number 25. The big 2-5. Where were you at 25? What With you? I agree. With a baby? Well, you one year old? Was she? Yeah. I, I was in aesthetic school at 25. I was I had a huge had life shift. Because that's what I've done for Working third shift. Because I would yeah. go... You would... <laughs> You would sleep. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You would sleep. I would go to aesthetic school. I would come home from Ann Arbor, which is like an hour and a half away from where we were living. 45 minutes. He would go, nah, on a good day, it was well, 45 winter, minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he would turn around and go to work, and we did that five days a week. Fun times. Yep. We should have started a podcast then. We could be on like an episode 500. 
Oh, about our, yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of podcasts back then. No, but that was when I found the podcasts. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my science. That was seven years ago. 25? Yeah. Yeah, you just turned 32 a couple weeks ago. Holy shit. Hey, happy yes. birthday, Adam Krause. He's not a Patreon, so he gets his own shout out because it's his birthday and we play video games a lot. Yep. And he listens to the podcast. What about happy birthday, Beth, who is a Patreon who shares your birthday? I commented on her Facebook. Oh, much more personal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't talk to her five nights a week <laughs> like I do Krause. <laughs> that is true. So he gets his own little personal shout out. All uh, right. Happy birthday, Adam, Krause. Er, and Andy will get his in November. Oh, uh, if we remember. It's like a, it's the day before or after our daughters, so I should remember. I don't know which direction. I just know it's within a day. Don't feel bad, guys. It took him like three or four years to remember my birthday. It's the 22nd. Uh-huh. It's literally four days before mine. Mm-hmm. And how long did the, you think was hey, the 23rd? But today, we found out the 22nd is like an actual, like, the 26th, everything in our lives. My birthday is May 26th. Um, our, an, our anniversary is in August 26th, and then our daughter's born on November 26th. Today, we found out the 22nd, your birthday, mm-hmm. is a big deal, too. Because your parents got married on that day. Yep. And then something My else. My aunt and uncle did, too. Your aunt and uncle did. Yeah. Look at us go. Everything's 22 or 26. Mm-hmm. Synchronicities. Now you can track our data and steal our identities. <laughs> Congratulations. Yep. Trust me, you don't want it. Well, not yours. Your credit score sucks. But I'm My credit score's a lot better, thank you very much. I know. I got you're... a credit card all on my own. Well, yeah, and you're on every loan that I'm on. No, I'm not. I haven't been on the last two mortgages because I was an independent oh, that's contractor. Right. That's right. Yep. No, no, no. Yeah, you, yes, because I was an independent no, contractor on, selling real estate, anyway, and anyway. then I was an independent contractor. So, and then the, when they put in the minimum wage, we're which on, is all they could put on in the mortgages, your income wasn't. I am not on the mortgages. I'm on the deed of the property. Whatever. Yeah, you get it if you kill me. That's all that counts. <laughs> so let's get to your terrible story. <laughs> Speaking that of won't killing tie you, into that at all. this is this is a great. Yes, it will. It'd be a great way to poison somebody, guys. Okay, just kidding. Don't do that. Um, and once again, we revert back to why I don't let her cook anything. <laughs> it's not ability. It's copability. <laughs> I'm really not that bad. <laughs> I'm also not that vengeful. I just drink it all away. It's fine. How's those ciders treating you? Really good. They're delicious. Thank you, Jordan, if you listen. We got um, ciders for dog sitting. Well, you got ciders. I got ciders. I got squat for dog yeah, sitting. Yeah, well, you know, she's my friend. She's not yours. <laughs> Jeremy, you owe me. He, do- he definitely doesn't listen. <laughs> no. He doesn't have social media. No. Lame. Your turn. All right. So we're going to have another science-based episode. Ready? Sure. I'm just going to check my phone one more time. You go ahead and start talking. All right. So um, I thought we'd take, you know, a little couple episode break from like true crime and we'll get back to that hopefully within like next episode or so. So today we're going to learn about some pretty terrible mushrooms and well, just one mushroom and why you really got to know what you're doing if you are foraging. Were you inspired because we went foraging before we went to Eloise? I, I was. I By am. By the way, I have learned. Okay. This is a completely tangent, but I need to get out of the way. We've been putting together the Eloise clips and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And in order to do so, I've had to learn. Okay. I learned how to quote unquote edit audio for this podcast. If you listen long enough, you know I don't do squat to the podcast. We don't Besides, edit out anything. I chop off the beginning and the end. And if. Tiff tells me to in the middle because she butchers a sentence so hard <laughs> that it doesn't make sense. Besides that, you pretty much get the raw audio that we just run through programs. But in order to put together the LOE stuff, I've had to learn how to video edit, which is so far out of my scope of knowledge that it's taking longer than I wanted to. So patrons and matrons, whatever, Patreon people, just bear with me. Um, and eventually we're going to put together a YouTube video that we're going to post Going over everything, and then the Patreon people will get all the raw audio and videos that yep. they want if they want to look through them. But we are going to do a YouTube video. We have a YouTube channel. It's <laughs> we literally, never use it. It's literally just tell me something terrible. Um, I don't know if it's got the podcast on there or not. I have no idea. But either way, we are going to have an Eloise video. We have the videos are kind of cool. The EVP stuff is very cool. A so it's just a matter particular. of recording us explaining what's happening, and then editing all that so i'm gonna say give me 10 more days that's all i need like it's oddly specific yeah well i was gonna say two weeks but that seemed like a reach so i'm gonna go 10 more days i don't know what that noise was um is that our dog no it's not no it sounded like a weird in that corner yeah anyway 
<laughs> our house could possibly. We talk be about Eloise, then things start knocking in our house. Yeah, I'm telling um, you, it's because Stephen followed me home. <laughs> anyway, the video is coming. It's just a matter of me learning. As no, we bought a PC. Oh, we have we had a computer. Obviously, we recorded, but we've only got a nice computer for like two months. So like audio editing has been like a process, and now video editing, different process. Very much so. Um, we got a nice webcam. And everything we are thinking about doing a live podcast at some point, which that'll be a whole nother element where mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to learn things. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm willing to learn. Just I don't have any freaking time. <laughs> yeah, bear with us. This is our hobby, guys. Yeah. So anyway, proceed with your story. All right. But when we, before we went to Louise, we did go on a mushroom foraging tour because we are super losers. We are, and we love the outdoors. And when the world ends, we'll know how to feed ourselves. Or kill ourselves. Or kill ourselves. Both could be valuable. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much the biggest moral takeaway from this is like, don't eat white mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Trust nothing. Exactly. Especially, well, morels are fine because there's not mm. any, there's not as many poisonous duplicates, right? Just one. Oh, good. And usually no, because like morels have, um, li- I'm glad also. Fake morels. We had a discussion before this episode. She's like, oh, this one's short. It's like three pages. Yeah. And we're 15 minutes in. You haven't read a no. sentence yet. So yes, I'm I have. Gonna... I've read three. So okay. false I'm, morels look gonna... like morels, but when you flip them over, their gills are not attached to the stems. Because when you look at a morel, they've got the cap, and then it kind of slides right down into the stem. Also, False morels don't have that. It's all hollow Go underneath. to on all of this, because you're like 1% Native American. Don't be racist. I said you're 1% Native American. Which part of no, that is racist? No, I'm like 8% Native American. Not according to your... Okay, look. They don't have enough... Okay. <laughs> anyway, no, no, no. Don't don't, don't go down your weird... There's not enough... His, yeah. There's not enough... There's not enough data to you, compare yeah, actual Native American has, blood. Anyway, I know for a fact. Yeah. Those cheekbones. Anyway, I'm going to sit back for like the next five minutes and just eat cheese and drink wine. You go ahead and tell a story about mushrooms. All right. Ready? Yes. So, um... Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big believer, like after doing all this research, uh, I definitely understand why Olga, who was one of the guides, who was like straight from like Russia or someplace like that. If you were from central Michigan, if you get on Airbnb and look up experiences in Chelsea, Michigan, which is pretty well known, mm-hmm. Jiffy Factory and all, um, if you see a mushroom foraging experience with Kirk and Olga, Take do it. it. They're awesome. They make cocktails. They make you dinner. It's great. Oh, yeah. It's the best 30 bucks you will ever spend. Cocktails with a simple syrup that he made himself. And vodka and champagne. Okay, but he made us... Okay, we went away for our birthday weekend. The best meal we had was made by a guy named Kirk over a a fire... A Bunsen burner A Bunsen burner on a... Yeah, on On a a picnic picnic table table at the ED Discovery Center, which is a state park. It literally was um, yellow oyster mushrooms that he cultivated himself. Asparagus... That he grew himself at his house and duck breast from ducks he raised himself. And it was the best meal we had. Oh, yeah. He literally seasoned it with salt, pepper, bay leaf, and thyme. And this guy looks, he's a dead ringer for, what's his, uh, Yukon Cornelius from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. He is a dead ringer for Yukon Cornelius. And he literally takes you on a three-hour tour of the woods and just tells you everything. Anything and everything. And if he doesn't know it. Olga does, who's 100% a Russian spy. and she, She's amazing. And she knows anything he doesn't know, like because he knows everything, mushrooms, animals, whatever, and she knows everything, plants. Plants, yeah. Like, yeah. did you guys know that Michigan has an orchid? Yeah. An orchid. Yeah, and she wouldn't tell you about them until you gained her trust, and then she would show you where, yeah, them where so they were. Yeah, so we're not going to tell you where they're at. Yeah. But it's Olga, none of your business. Olga, who 100% would kill you if she didn't trust you. Uh-huh. But Kirk and Olga, greatest, like, five stars. Like, I wish... I like. I wish I could promote their experience because it was awesome. It was, yeah. So get on Airbnb, look at mushroom foraging, central. Mich- just do it. Just do it in the spring or the fall peak mushroom times. They're awesome. Yeah, and they were like super chill about being like, don't eat, like don't eat that. Like, yeah, potentially this could kill you. This could okay. kill you. This is how horrible <laughs> it is. Ready? Yeah. Also, we're twenty minutes in. You haven't read beyond three sentences. Anyway. So anyway, you got a lot to cut. You got a lot to cut out. Um, this is so, and this is what happens when I am tired and drink. No, it's what happens when I drink wine. Yeah, like, the vodka wine. I'm like, wee, or vodka drunk. This is wine drunk, which is I'm like, I just want to tell you everything. <laughs> which is very unusual for people that know us. Scott is like quiet, and then when he gets drunk and loud, you're like, who is this human being? <laughs> yeah. Why does he not stop running through the house? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there are over 2,500 fleshy mushrooms in Michigan, <laughs> which just, <laughs> that just means they're big enough to eat. <laughs> But yeah, they're called like large fleshy. Fleshy mushrooms? <laughs> yes, they are. Can you make fleshy mushroom stamps with them? <laughs> <laughs> this is directly from a pamphlet from MSU. Like Sorry. that's what they're called. Mm-hmm. Large fleshy mushrooms. I just want to make, never mind. I have all the bad jokes <laughs> and I got to remember like, I don't know what, <laughs> never mind. Keep okay. going. <laughs> You'll get to them. So there are about 60 to 100 species of mushrooms that are known to be fine to eat. <laughs> But over 50 of those 2,500 varieties of fleshy mushrooms um, are considered poisonous. Some only cause like gastric distress ranging anywhere from mild to severe and will sometimes result in hospitalizations to prevent dehydration. Others can kill you. And more than likely, once you actually develop symptoms, the poisons have worked their way through your system enough that doing a stomach pump will do you no good. So, oh, well, that's encouraging. Yes. <laughs> no backup plan. Yep. So the one in particular that we're going to be talking about, it's six hours minimum before your body, before you you present any symptoms to mm-hmm. the poisoning. So like, yeah, it's worked its way through your stomach, through your intestines, into your liver. Oh. Yes. Yep. And so the, the, you can't pump a liver, I'm pretty sure. I've you never cannot. Heard of that. So there are a, a lot of myths surrounding mushrooms and determining whether a mushroom is poisonous or what to do to nullify the poison in a mushroom. Some old wives' tales for testing for poison include a mushroom um, that a mushroom is safe if you can peel its cap. Mushrooms growing on wood is supposed to be safe. A poisonous mushroom is supposed to darken a silver coin. And if you cook the mushrooms with silver, it's supposed to eliminate the poison. Do not do any of these things. It does not matter. <laughs> you can do them. They just aren't going to help you. You still though. probably will die. Did you say darken a coin? Yeah. So like it like tarnishes it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It will tarnish the silver. So those um, old wives. Mm-hmm. Untrustworthy. Don't know anything. They're really trying to kill you. You got to watch out for Some the arsenic. Some of it is good information, just not in this case. No. So um, other sort of like wives' tales are if an animal can eat it, so can we, which is definitely not true. For example, rabbits can eat the... um, Didn't Kirk tell us squirrels can eat every mushroom? Yeah. Squirrels and rabbits can eat the amita... The amanita? Amanita mushrooms. Amanita mushrooms. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, and they also say that all white mushrooms can be eaten safely. This is extremely not true. That deadly amanita, it is described as a lovely satiny white. Should be called satiny white. Yep. And then last, thoroughly cooking a mushroom renders it safe to eat. Also false. <laughs> Amatoxin, the poison found in the Amanita mushrooms, is fully resistant to heat, so nothing you can do can render this mushroom Deep non-toxic. Fry for two hours doesn't Doesn't care. matter. So can you figure out what kind of mushroom we're going to be talking about? The Amanita? Yes. Amanita mushroom? Yep. Um, the... Alternative names for for it are the Angel of Death or the Destroying Angel. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, those are very dark. Yeah. An Angel of Death is like, what's his face? The Nazi doctor. Um, starts with an H. Does it? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Does it? Mm-hmm. Heim- Heimler? Himmler. 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 Heimler. Heimlich. <laughs> I think it's Henrik Himmler or something like that. I don't think it's Henrik. God, you think I would fucking know. Himmler. He Jamie? moved. He moved to South tell America. Yes, That's all I did. can tell you. Um, so the destroying angel is found in our lovely state, the Michigan. Destroying angel. Yep, it is a fully white mushroom. It starts as a little white button sticking out of the dirt, kind of like a puffball, which is an edible mushroom. Mm-hmm. So you got to be careful. You got to slice them open. Are you talking about open. hallucinogenic mushrooms or psychedelics? No. Ah, oh, bummer, dude. I know because a lot of those are poisonous. This episode could have been brought to you by psychedelic mushrooms. Ah, oh, darn it. I've never taken mushrooms in my life. Me neither. I don't even know how you take mushrooms. <laughs> you just, From a no, drug dealer. Do you gr- are they a powder? I have no clue. Can I drink them? I don't think you can <laughs> drink I, them. Then I'm out. Um, um, so once this mushroom starts growing. Comment it, below your favorite kind of mushroom. <laughs> your favorite kind of mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite psychedelic. Um, so once this mushroom starts growing, it pushes out of the little egg-shaped ball that it is encased with. It's called the universal veil. So this veil is important in identification, and it leaves a little cup-like structure at the bottom called a vulva. Oh, how grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. Anatomically correct? Anatomically correct. There you go. So um, this is usually under the ground. 
-hmm. which is why it's important when you pick your mushroom, you're picking it from the ground to make sure it doesn't have that universal veil because if it does, you're probably going to die. Um, as the, and then you go to emergency, as Olga would say. Yes. And as the stalk of the mushroom elongates, that's the pamphlet's word, not mine, um, it oh. develops a partial veil. Do you have a problem with elongate? <laughs> a stalk elongating? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have all the problems with it. Um, so anyway, as it develops... you have all the problems with you putting your paper inside of that heath bar wrapper, I do. Because you should. So it um, develops a partial veil, which is like a second membrane. It's also important in identification because the Amanita family, that's like the biggest identifier is that there's two veils mm-hmm. on it. Um, at first, it covers the loose gills um, and the cap. So the loose gills, it's like once you flip over the bottom, if the gills I feel like I'm of in it class. connect, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if great. the gills of it, <laughs> if the gills don't connect to the stalk, then mm-hmm. it's like a loose gill. Yeah. Um, and it's, the cap. It's had its gill broken. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so as it grows the um partial veil will break away from the cap mm-hmm. and it'll form like a skirt around the stalk of the um it's like a little extra flappy thing it's an uncircumcised mushroom okay um and this in case you care is called um a lahayam <laughs> no it is called an annulus so there's a vulva and an annulus. How do you spell annulus? A N N U L U S. Okay. Annulus. I was hoping it was A N A L U S. I was like, that's not annulus. <laughs> no. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the basic anatomy of a mushroom. Sweet. And after all of this, it creates this beautiful white ethereal mushroom that can kill you. Beautiful. And unfortunately, um, apparently, it also tastes really delicious <laughs> yeah. famous last words <laughs> yes boy that was a grip <laughs> <laughs> no because it takes a long time to die from this mushroom oh yep a nice slow burn yes so we're going to talk about how the amatoxin works in our body which is the poison that's found in the amita family mushrooms side note there are over 600 types of amita amanita mushrooms all over the world um, another super poisonous one that's found in the Northern Hemisphere is like that stereotypical kind of like faded, ugly, yellow, slight semicircle. People can't see your hand. Gesture. Mushroom. Yep. <laughs> um, that one is called the death cap. Oh. Yep. And then there's that's also. That's like your nightcap you wear. Yes. <laughs> like Scrooge. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, <laughs> so there's also the red mushroom with the white spots on it. That one's part of the Amita family and it's called. Oh, like the, from Mario? Yeah. Yep, it's called the fly amina, um, amanita. Um, and I just like cursorily looked into this one, and apparently you can eat it if it's prepared cro- properly. I wouldn't risk it. It's like it. blowfish where you have like a one in whatever chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there's like, apparently this one you can cook out the poisons, but I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it. No. Nope. <laughs> just have a steak. Yes. So this family of mushrooms, the amanitas, are responsible for 95% of mushroom poisonings. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a rather high percentage. It really is. So once it's ingested, symptoms do not appear until a minimum of, minimum of six hours later. Sometimes it can take up to 36 hours. And you probably just think it's food poisoning at that point. Mm-hmm. Because most symptoms start about 12 hours after consumption, which food poisoning usually happens about eight hours after. Um, okay. Amatoxin is made up of two oligopeptides. You think I'd know how to say that word. Oligopeptides that act um, on the... They act as RNA polymerase inhibitors, which means that they put a stop to like all these different sorts of functions that Mm -hmm. happen in like this chain reaction that essentially allows RNA and DNA and like the messaging RNA. Ooh, talk nerdy too. Yes. (laughs) To move from (laughs) one cell to another. And so that like reduces replication. Cell replication. Yes, it prevents Mm -hmm. cell replication essentially. So your body functions start just slowing down. Yes. And there's... Also, no messages that can be sent from, like, the RNA to the DNA to tell it what to do. It kills the operator at your local telephone station. It really does. Yes. And there's all sorts of, like, molecular level stuff that helps, like, life that I could barely get a grasp on. I'm sure if you just read through, like, one paper, you'd be able to explain it. Um, Nobody cares. This isn't called tell me something scientific. Yep. Um, So, to put it simply, it just stops the transfer of DNA info from going from, like, one cell to another. And that replication... Does no, doesn't no longer happens. And put when in, replication put stops... It in pleasant in, in like today's text, yeah. your like Wi-Fi router goes out 
So you can try to look up stuff all you want. You just have no internet. It's worse than that, though, because like if your DNA and cell I'm replication stops, it can't. It, then like you die. Like once once cell replication stops, you die. Yeah, if you take Wi-Fi away from a teenager, they pretty much die. That is true. They, they can't take TikTok on the floor. and like do their weird dances and shit. <laughs> um. <laughs> So also my audio might have sounded weird there because I was dancing. So just <laughs> <laughs> so this causes a lot of damage to all of our organ systems in our body, but it really in particularly affects the liver. This is kind of the first stop after absorption in the gastrointestinal tract. And because the am- the amotoxin inhibits the RNA polymerase um, so that polymerase. DNA yeah, can't be, yes, can't be replicated to make new cells. The liver then is no longer to repair any damage that was done by the toxins, in which case um, the cells to the liver start to disintegrate and eventually the liver dissolves. Dissolves? Dissolves. I'm going to guess that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Liver is kind of important. It is. Um, it can also affect your kidneys. As we drink. Yes. <laughs> Follow it with some water, you'll this be This feels kind of like, you know. A little too close to home. Mm-hmm. So outwardly, people that have accidentally poisoned themselves with the destroying angel can expect to experience symptoms like headaches, dizziness, nausea, short- shortness of breath. And a lack of liver. Yes. Coughing, insomnia, diarrhea, <laughs> gastrointestinal disturbances, back pain, urinary frequency. Just a little Pepto. You're mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> Delirium, convulsions, liver and kidney damages, and death. Oh, okay. It's a good one, right? So it's like taking any over... Like- you know, that's like every Too much ibuprofen. At, the, at the end of every yeah pharmaceutical company like ad on TV. Yeah, just, some some yeah side effects may include um, dizziness. So contact Out with the stomach death. So contact um, with the eyes can result in irritation, eye damage, and corneal burns. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Nope. It's pepper spray. Yep. So there are three different phases of poisoning. With the first twelve denial. Just, yeah. <laughs> So the first 12 to 24. And then grief. (laughs) Of your own life. Yes. Grief over what you have done. (laughs) So the first 12 to 24 hours. Forging history. Now you die. (laughs) From the onset of the symptoms um, is a period of acute symptoms. So just some of the like less. All the cute ones. Yeah. Just all the cute ones. Just a few convulsions. Some drooling. Let me hold your hair (laughs) while you puke out your liver. (laughs) Um, and those, <laughs> and so the acute system, the acute symptoms, symptoms there you go, I'll help you along. I can't see your paper. Those paper. usually only last about like 12 to 24 hours as well. Mm-hmm. And then the next 12 to 24 hours, you're on the mend. Yeah, you're you're just, like, it's fine. It was just some food poisoning. Yeah, I just bypassed my liver, yeah. even though it's falling yep. out of my body. Sharp left turn. The fact that it dissolves mm-hmm. is sketchy. Like, yeah. No, it. Do you shit out your own liver then? No, your body eats it. It turns what? to mush. Yeah, like it's just like everything else. No, it's you're With you're little, gonna die little, at that point. Little side of onions. I've heard old people love that. Mm-hmm. I've never had liver Hannibal Lecter would really enjoy. Have you ever eaten liver? Like cooked up? Like no not human? <laughs> not no, no. Human. Um, we've only ever used liver to catch catfish. Okay. Yeah, that's a different story. Rotten cat, rotten liver for catfish. Like chum buckets for hillbillies. Nice. Did you shoot them with arrows? No, we put them on. Anyway, can you keep reading your story? This is a story for Happy a different night. at night, and we just had posted, like, stuck in the ground, like, in tubes. Um, Should use Taco Bell. That really gets people at they, night. They really like frogs. Do they? Baby frogs. Baby frogs. Sorry, guys. Um, Those are old tadpoles, we call them. <laughs> so, once you think you're rounding the corner um, from your period of relative wellness, um, you the begin... The eye of the storm. Yes, you begin the third phase. And this is when, like... <laughs> this is acceptance. Yes. Oh, grief, sorry. <laughs> yes, this is grief. So, these the worst kind of cases can lead to, like, a fatty liver... Toxic necrosis, which is like liver tissue death. Yeah, I was going to say, yep. necrosis is never good. Mm-mm. Nope. And it's usually um, paired with um, toxic hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver. Anything that starts with necro. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you also get acute, oh, Lord, tubulointestinal ne- nephrop. Pathy, you, kidney damage. You probably um, crush that. Yep, it's just injury to the kidneys. Punched in the yep. kidneys. And then all of these can lead to liver and kidney failure, which can also lead to death. Fun. Yes. And there isn't really a prescribed cure for any of this. Every poison is taken on like a case by case treatment. A lot of it's. What was that plant they said would fix everything when we were out with Olga? Solomon's seal. 
Those are like wounds. Solomon seal. Solomon seal. So- Soruman. That's a di- that's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon is the biblical bro. I will give you guys one guess what book I read growing up, and it wasn't the Bible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Soruman seal. Different than Solomon seal. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So um, there's no prescribed cure for this poisoning. Um, a lot of it's You're like a getting, case sorry. by case basis. I just feel like eating the wrong mushroom turns you into an orc. <laughs> <laughs> So you just yeah, sorry. That's just the only. You melt th- into the sack. You create the immunotic like fluid that goes to the sack that they had when they yeah. were slicing them open. I can see an orc just smashing mushrooms, not caring whether they're poisonous or not. No, for sure. No, yeah. they don't. They like meat, rotten, gross meat. Yeah, poisonous or mushrooms. halflings, or mushrooms, or mushrooms. Um, so a lot of it is treating. Um, this poison like kidney or liver failure. Usually there's a high dose of penicillin involved. And then there's this extract from milk thistle that's called psilobininin. Um, that's occasionally used as an antitoxin, but there hasn't really been enough time dedicated to studying this as a treatment. They've had a lot of successful um, cases from it, but like there's, yeah, they don't know how it works or if it works for everybody. Okay. Um, and then a lot of these poisons result in dialysis and organ transplants, fluid and electrolytes. Well, that makes sense if you have no kidneys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or no liver. Yeah. Um, it also is treated with like fluid and electrolyte replacement, oral activated charcoal and lactulose. I don't know what that is. Um, L- IVs. Lactulose? Lactulose. Hmm. Yep. IVs that are filled with the aforementioned silabinin and thiactic acid. Hemoperfusion, which is a way to literally f- filter it's a, it's the blood. It's a good thing you've only had one and a half ciders because otherwise you'd be butchering Oh, this. worse than what I already am. So um, hemo, the hemo, what the fuck? There it is. There's a word. <laughs> I, I lost my, uh, my anxiety pen. with your pen. I know. So the hemoperfusion um, is a way that they literally take the blood out of your system and run it out of your body and run it through a filtration system and then back into That's your body. That's pretty much like what dialysis is. Yeah. And so they do that like twice. Like they do it like every eight hours until they've worked all of the toxins out of your body. Huh. Um, and uh, any damage that was done to the liver or kidneys, unfortunately, cannot be. The real question is why do mushrooms want to kill us so bad? They don't know. They literally are trying to figure because out. Because Kirk, our mushroom um, connoisseur. He was like, there are four mushrooms well, in Michigan no, he's you can like, safely eat. He pretty much said, like, organisms are closer to humans than they are to, like, plants. So a lot of plants or, like, things develop defense mechanisms. Yeah. But they it's don't know. It's crazy how much they mimic, though. Yeah. Like, poisonous and non-poisonous. Like, how much they mimic mm-hmm. each other. And they don't know if it's, like, a waste substance from them, if it's part of their processes, if they're the trying the not to get eaten. Eat it? They, d- they literally don't understand mushrooms at all. Because a lot of them, they're like, it's not even a defense mechanism. Some of them still taste really good. Some of them have that caustic acid that, like, makes you burn. Like, they don't know. You just are foaming at the mouth. Like yeah, they, li- they literally do not know mad why. Mad Dog Gum from uh, King and Arthur's Court? Nope. You've never seen that movie. Mm-mm. Don't even judge me. You've never seen Anger Management. You and I grew up in two different households. Um, <laughs> so anyway. King and King Arthur, Kid and King Arthur's Court had the same kid in it that was in Rookie of the Year. Okay. You okay? We're gonna go have a chat after this. <laughs> it might end. A divorce, we're gonna make. Guys. We're gonna start making a list on this. I'm gonna make it left-handed because that's the only hand I have for you about movies we have to watch. Okay. Okay. Running list. <laughs> so anyway, after all that terrible information, we any damage that's terrible. already been done to your kidneys and your livers cannot be reversed. So it's irreversible. Yes. So <laughs> if it's eaten away half your liver, you're fucked. Um. No, you have left. <laughs> Sorry, all you get to do is eat, drink water for the rest of your eat, life. Eat, uh, eat water. Eat water. Drink and eat water. Ice cubes. Yep. Celery so, and ice cubes. I was going to do a second, like, super poisonous class of mushrooms in Michigan that actually takes, like, six to ten days before you start seeing um, the, poisons, the poisonous death. symptoms. Yeah, no, just the symptoms. Um, but I decided uh, to not do that because I rambled enough. This was terrible enough? enough. Mm-hmm. Yep, so I just want to end with, like, don't eat... Um, white mushrooms and then also don't eat any mushrooms unless you know for a fact yes um, that's and what then Kirk and Olga told me also or do you end up in emergency as Olga kept saying yes. like, that was her favorite sentence you go to emergency yep and you then go to emergency also you don't want to eat little brown mushrooms LBMs yep you don't want to eat LBMs we have LBMs in our yard so we I do like, I kind of want to spore check them to see what the, none of them are good none of them are good they either taste awful 
they either have some terrible toxin in them, like this one, mm-hmm. or that one that I didn't want to go into, yeah. the one that takes like six to ten days before it even presents the symptoms, news, and they don't know shit about it. I literally searched studies. There was nothing on Wikipedia. Well, like thousands of little brown mushrooms. Yeah. But no, I mean make, like the toxin that's, that oh, comes from they these They do things. make our daughter think we have fairies in our backyard. They, they really do. Um, and so they they either taste awful, they either can kill you even more horribly than this one, well, they're not, or they're hallucinogenic. Ooh, ooh, might be risk, might be yeah, worth it. So, so if you want to play a uh, little brown mushroom, Let's feed him to the dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so if you want to risk your, your life, face went from huh? No, so fast. <laughs> Look at the dog over there. She's such a lump. She didn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, she, she, we probably wouldn't even notice. I she got poisoned. Your life, yeah. She could be on a hallucinogenic right now. You wouldn't know. <laughs> um, Lazy ass. So, so if you really, if you really want to play. Russian roulette with little brown mushrooms. You go ahead and do I that. Russian roulette. It's going to be with Olga. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to lose. And you end up in an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you've been thoroughly warned, guys. Watch out for your mushrooms. Do you have sources for this one, or is this just... I do. So, um, Wikipedia, midwestmycology.org. It's Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Dot com, Midwest Myology, org, and that pamphlet that I mentioned earlier that was published by MSU called Don't Pick Poison. MSU is Michigan State University for all you non-Michigan folk. It could be Mississippi State. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. They're also MSU. Nope. These guys are... Sparties. Yep. <laughs> hey, you know what? They're big farms. <laughs> I don't know what you want from It me. literally was the farming college. Yes. Is Michigan Farming College. So, right? you know, pretty reputable source, I think. Ooh. Apart from Kirk and all I say reputable. You say reputable. Okay. It's okay. I also say insatiable, and apparently that's improper as well. That's how I say that, so you're good. Oh, good. If it's not what I say, it's wrong, so <laughs> that's clearly why I do all the talking in this, this podcast. You do. You have been doing a lot of talking Also, this lately. was very non-murdery, so I expect Friday's episode to be like the worst episode ever. He's a serial killer. Great. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. We'll have names and body piles. Just, we will stacks of bodies anyway mm-hmm. thank you all for listening if you made it this far congratulations yeah seriously this was supposed to be short well, he it will, messed nah, it up. it'll be fine yeah we took a little sabbatical like in the intro you won't even notice i told you it, okay today's memorial day it's been a long weekend it has been and i had wine for the first time in a long time so pardon my rambling <laughs> <laughs> But no, we uh, we appreciate you guys for listening. Yes, thank you. I feel like, what's this, episode 25? It is. We've been doing this for three months. That is nuts. Right? Yep. Holy cow. I felt my I felt my face get heavier as you were saying that. Like, <laughs> I could just feel Time's the scary. exhaustion. Don't have a kid. Otherwise, you, like, you're like, oh, seven and a half years. Um, it's the personification of time passing. Yeah, like she's a stopwatch. Click, click. It's Seven fine. and a half years since the day she was born. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Mental breakdown. This, Before, fine. We're all going to go. We're both going to go cry into a bowl of popcorn and alcohol. Um, so thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> and we'll, uh, you'll, well, we won't ever see you. But you'll hear us Friday. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for listening to our terrible podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at TMSTPod. And if you'd like to support the show, you can find us on Patreon at Tell Me Something Terrible. Oof, that was terrible.